If you just got your Lenovo Legion Go or are planning to pick one up, this will be the definitive guide on how to get it set up for gaming. And we'll show you how to enable the hidden setting that'll unlock your FPS to make this thing run faster than it does straight out of the box. So let's jump into setup. The large box that I got delivered from Best Buy has a few items for you to be aware of. Cutting it open reveals foam, which holds a smaller box with all the Legion branding on it and this amazing logo that says leg. Inside the leg box, you'll find the travel case, which holds the Legion Go inside of it beneath a cardboard sheet. You additionally will find Lenovo services information, warranty details, and the 65 watt power adapter. And this is where we start the journey of bad documentation from Lenovo on what the Legion Go is capable of, or simple things like the length of the charger. They don't list it anywhere on their product page or with the retailers. It's six feet or 1.8 meters long in case you're trying to find those details. Moving on to the console itself, the sleeve holds details on how to get going with the Legion Go. It shows you that you must first plug in the device before booting it up for the first time, even though it may have battery left on the device. Inside the carrying case, there's absolutely nowhere to put the charger because it's fully packed to the brim with protective foam to safeguard your console. You'll have to pack the charger separately, just like how Lenovo ships it in its actual box. Underneath the lid, you'll have your Legion Go in a plastic bag, which warns you of whales. Now, since this is the first time you'll get your hands on the handheld, let's take this time to familiarize ourselves with the layouts and all of the buttons all over this device because there's a ton. On top, you can find the volume up and down buttons next to the USB-C 4.0 port, which supports both power delivery 3.0 and display port output and speeds up to 40 gigabits per second. Then there's the micro SD card reader supporting up to two terabytes. That's followed by the vents for the internal fans, a headphone mic combo port, and then the power button that resembles the Legion Go logo. Slightly behind all of this is the two by two watt speakers for the handheld. Then in the middle, you'll see the 8.8 inch 256 by 1600 IPS screen capable of 500 nits of brightness, a 144 hertz refresh rate, 97% of the DCI-P3 color space, and 10 fingers of touch on its Gorilla Glass 5 with two microphones at the very bottom of the display. On the bottom of the device, you'll see another USB-C 4.0 port with the same charging and display and speed capabilities as the one on top, which helps with convenient cable positioning depending on how you want to hold or set up the device. Because on the back is where you'll find the large kickstand that props the device up, making the top USB-C port the most accessible. Above that, you'll find the intake vents for the fans, all helping to keep your Legion Go Z1 Extreme processor very cool. On either side of the Legion Go, you'll find the connection section for the Legion True Strike controllers, which adhere to the console with a quick push in and shove down to lock them in place. On the bottom of each controller, you'll find the controller release button to take them off by sliding up and pulling out. They're set up in such a way that accidental detachment isn't likely to happen. The controllers are asymmetrical in both joystick placement, but also the rest of their buttons. So they host very different capabilities, but do happen to have six axis gyroscopes for the two games in the world that you'll actually play that use that feature. Very convenient. The left controller has on the front, the Legion left button for quick access to Lenovo software when you finally get this thing booted up. Then there's the left stick with RGB illumination, a clicky D-pad, a view button, and a menu button. Up top, you have the familiar left bumper and trigger buttons, but then there's the customizable Y1 and Y2 buttons in a vertical orientation that can be configured in the Lenovo Legion Space software. The right controller is where things go off the rails and Lenovo shows off a bunch of experimentation. You start off with the typical Legion right button, ABXY buttons, and a right RGB ring joystick, but then there's a trackpad similar to the Steam Deck, but it's recessed here instead of pronounced like it is on Valve's device. The back has a mouse wheel scroll, which makes navigating web pages much easier and goes into their FPS mode, which we'll talk about in a bit, and customizable M3 and Y3 buttons, but in a horizontal orientation. And on top, you'll have the familiar right bumper and trigger buttons, but then that continues into another customizable M1 button and a separated M2 button to, again, to configure in Lenovo software. The bottom of the right joystick is where things get really experimental. There's a mouse sensor and an FPS mode switch, which goes with the next thing we'll unbox, the base for the right controller that allows you to hold it like a vertical mouse and use it in first person shooters to get the benefit of mouse level accuracy, but controller level convenience. And that's also where the scroll wheel on the back comes in to help you play FPS games. That's all that's in the containers. So now it's time to get this thing actually up and running, which we do by setting up Windows 11. 
7, which should be familiar if you fought a laptop recently, but do note that it does require you to have a connection to the internet and a Microsoft account to move forward, unless you know how to get around it, in which case, you probably aren't watching this video. You should probably set aside around 20 to 30 minutes to get everything up and running, which is an unfortunate limitation of the Legion Go running Windows instead of Linux. I will be so happy the day that we actually get SteamOS on other handhelds. I know there's Chiaki and a whole bunch of others. This is just a side rant. SteamOS is one of the best things that Valve has ever done, and I want to see it on handhelds like great ones like the Legion Go here. So moving on, you'll have to choose your location, your keyboard layout, your internet connection, and at this point, the device will restart. Then there's a license agreement to agree to, and now you can choose to name your device. Then you'll be forced to log into your Microsoft account, and depending on how long you've been using that account, you can either restore other installs of Windows or start fresh. Moving on, there are no biometrics to be had here like on the ROG Ally, so you're just trying to set a pin for your device and log in that way. Then next are the privacy settings that I personally always deactivate, but that will be a preference for you. You have to answer, do you want Microsoft to know where you are and to tailor Windows to you? And if so, you keep those things on. Next, you can customize your Windows experience and connect your Android device directly to it for sending messages and more. You can choose to accept or decline a free trial of Microsoft 365, but even if you decline, it stays installed on the device as bloatware. Then there's more Microsoft shovelware, and then it acts like it's kindly setting up your room for your arrival. And after 10 minutes, if you're quick, you're finally into Windows. You'll get a quick primer on how to use Windows 11 via finger, and then from there, typically, you want to uninstall all of the apps you don't want and that aren't necessary from gaming. But in this case, most of the bloatware comes from Microsoft themselves with Office and Microsoft 365, but there's shockingly little that's added on by Lenovo themselves. I was truly surprised. Typically with Lenovo's laptops, and I've bought plenty, you get a lot of shoveled bloatware. But the only extra app installed on the Legion Go is the, I would argue, necessary Legion space. So from this point, you should just set aside a long time to download all of the Windows 11 updates and the Legion Go specific updates that you find in the Windows Update tab. The speed of this is gonna be determined by the speed of your internet, but even if you have a gigabit connection like I do, this is probably a time where you're gonna wanna walk away from the Legion Go while it does its thing. Now, there may or may not have been a GPU driver update in the Windows Update section. Lenovo did launch a brand new driver right after this handheld release that contains some bug fixes for games like Starfield. There shouldn't be many FPS games to be had from the driver update, but if you're struggling with how the Legion Go is playing your games, be sure to check Lenovo's GPU driver page to see if you're on the latest version because it is a separate branch from the main GPU driver. At this point, you should boot into Lenovo's Legion Space app because that will give us the fine control that we want to have over this handheld. It'll require a small update, but nothing too big. But then it requires a bit more time to update the firmware on the controllers to make sure those are running as effectively as possible. This does take a few minutes. You'll then be greeted by a quick start guide on how everything works in this app, but there's a few quirks that I'll be detailing that you should be aware of and Lenovo should definitely fix. So Lenovo's Legion Space app feels a lot like Steam's big picture mode. You can access everything from a centralized menu, including your installed game library, a dedicated game store from gamesplanet.com, which I learned is an officially authorized game seller. You can also have cloud gaming baked into the app that does not work as it should, and access to all of the settings. You can set up the MMY custom buttons in this app as well, but it's pretty limited because when you're in gamepad mode, you can only choose from specific options that Lenovo sets instead of being able to customize it to whatever you want. And then there's also various FPS modes that are included with this. It's not the most robust feature. I wanna see just more customizability here. It'll also give you a quick install section to get all of the popular game launchers up and going. Most of them take you to their respective web pages, but Steam will start installing when you click on that one, which is nice. Now, the cloud gaming section is a nice idea, but unfortunately, as I'll document in other ways, the buttons on the controller interact with multiple sections at the same time. So while you're trying to input game commands, it'll also input commands to the Legion Space app and back you out of the game that you're playing because the game is playing in the browser in the Legion Space app. So you're actually pressing two buttons at once effectively and it's it's just a right mess. But this also happens when you get into the quick setting section of the Legion Space app. So when you press the Legion R button on the right controller, you'll be greeted with a quick access menu to various places in the Legion space app. You then need to, every single time, 
press the Legion R button again to close that out, and then press it for a third time to finally get to the quick settings section. Oh, and if you press that button too quickly to get to the quick settings faster, it doesn't register the inputs and you have to slow down. But then when you're in the quick settings apps, potentially trying to actually utilize the features that Lenovo gives you, but you happen to be in a game, you pressing the gamepad buttons in the Legion Space Quick Settings menu will then press buttons in the actual game. It doesn't override anything. So you have to use your finger to touch the quick settings if you're in a game. If you're in the Legion Space app, everything works as it's supposed to. There's no problems there. But the quick settings is helpful, so that's why it's so frustrating. I actually was using it quite a bit. But it's an immediately frustrating adventure that I hope Lenovo fixes in an update, making it so that the default setting on the buttons is to do one thing or the other so I don't have to cycle through it. It's especially difficult when you click on a button in the quick access menu, then that menu disappears, so you want to bring it back up to press another one, but then pressing the Legion R button again will bring you to the settings menu before you get to the access menu again. You can't, it doesn't work as intuitively as I would want it to. But let's dive into the quick settings because there's plenty here to get your Legion Go running as fast as possible. But there's also two really important options for higher FPS that Lenovo hides from you that we'll get to later on. So the quick settings allow you to customize things like brightness, volume, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, the resolution of the device with three different options being easily swapped between. And then you can swap between 60 Hertz and 144 Hertz mode, and then change the lighting effects and change up the console key mapping if you have something else set between gamepad and FPS mode. Setting it to 144 Hertz is recommended because if you can hit that in some games like Vampire Survivors, the gameplay would look so much better than other handhelds. There were some earlier reports that the Legion Go would support variable refresh rate to reduce screen tearing, but it's definitely not included. However, do note increasing it to 144 Hertz will decrease battery life because your screen is running over twice as much as 60 Hertz. But the second sub menu in the quick settings is what you really want. So this is the performance section. It shows the battery status of the console and controllers, and then performance metrics of the CPU, GPU, battery, VRAM, and RAM. And you can choose to display those on a helpful overlay that Lenovo calls the frame monitor. It can display just the FPS, FPS plus CPU, GPU, and battery levels, or all of those with VRAM, RAM, fan speed, and RS R status added in. We'll talk about RSR in a second because it's a way to unlock some extra performance. But below that frame monitor, we've got the real keys to power, thermal modes, which change how much power your Z1 Extreme chip is using and makes games run faster. There's quiet, balance, performank with a lower E and custom. Custom allows you to set it to anything from 5 watts to 30 watts. And there was a rumor that the Legion Go would support up to 48 watts, but there doesn't appear to be any way to set that with Lenovo's own software right now. The 30 watt option got me 60 FPS average in Cyberpunk at 800p on the Steam Deck setting, 55 FPS in performance mode, 39 FPS in balance mode, and only 13 FPS in quiet mode. I, I would really stay away from quiet mode if you're trying to play AAA games. It might work for lighter titles, but definitely not anything graphically demanding. But unfortunately, here's another area where Lenovo doesn't provide any documentation that I could find on the internet. They don't specifically state how many watts each mode uses. Now, they may have provided this in a reviewer's guide, but since I bought mine retail, I don't have access to this. Based on my testing, I'd say that quiet mode is using between 5 and 10 watts. Balance is using 20 to 20 two watts performance is using 25 watts so if you want to get the fastest possible gaming right out of the gate using the custom 30 watt option is the right move because it is slightly faster than performing and if you want to optimize for battery life instead you'll have to tune the wattage to your own desires and it appears that there isn't much performance penalty for switching from plugged in to battery mode fps was roughly the same between the two in all of the modes if maybe a bit slower when on battery but the real problem here is that the software doesn't actually actually change power profiles when you plug in the device or unplug it. You can't have it on balance mode when you're on battery and on custom 30 watt mode when you're plugged in as of right now based on how Lenovo has the software set up. Additionally, there's a setting in one of the menus to apply game profile, which I presume is to make it so that you can set custom game profiles with wattage and all of that, like you can find on things like the Rogue Ally or on the Steam Deck. But here, it's not in the quick settings menu, which makes it very difficult to actually access. And then it 
isn't quite clear. There's no instructions that Lenovo provides here. So I would suggest that you're just staying in the quick settings and modifying per game right now while Lenovo allegedly is gonna be fixing this in an upcoming patch to the Legion Space app. So then continuing on in the quick settings menu, there's Windows power modes for performance, balanced or efficiency. Again, hit performance for the most FPS here. And then below that, there's a toggle for full fan speed. That'll ramp the fans up to a max of nearly 8,000 RPM. Let me, let me show that to you. So as mentioned, I have to press once, brings up the quick access, twice to close it, thrice to bring up the quick settings. <laughs> then we go down into performance mode, turn on full fan speed it's significantly louder it is it is definitely a noticeable improvement over anything that's happening in game but i found that it didn't increase performance by much the fans kept everything cool enough at stock settings that uh, adding the extra noise just didn't seem to be worth the maybe half of an fps that you may get in the worst case scenarios but again it's nice for lenovo to include but in the rest of the submenus, there's the productivity mode toggle to make sure an external display is primary and the ability to toggle on and off the touchpad. That's the gist of all that Lenovo provides you from the outset. But there's still the matter of the couple of hidden features. Let's start with RSR, or Radeon Super Resolution. It's an in-driver upscaler that allows you to get faster frame rate for minimal quality loss. It's mostly for games that don't have FSR already, but AMD claims you can see between 1.5 to 3.2 times Times performance gain just by having this feature turned on. Lenovo hides this option not in the quick settings but in the settings of the Lenovo Space app. Go into the performance section there and you'll find the toggle for Radeon Super Resolution. You can't use it in games where you already have FSR active but when I tried having the toggle on for RSR and had FSR on in Cyberpunk there was no real issue. The FPS stayed the same since FSR was already working so keeping Radeon Super Resolution on by default can be a way to enable faster frame rate with very little penalty. But RSR is something that can be enabled on any GPU device. Let's talk about something Lenovo hid in the BIOS to unlock faster FPS. By default, the Z1 Extreme on the Legion Go only has access to three gigabytes of dedicated video memory. This comes out of the 16 gigabytes total that is on the device, and the rest gets shared to the system as regular RAM, similar to how the Xbox or PS5 use their RAM. But if you access the BIOS, you can actually change this video memory amount. To do that easily without a keyboard, you hold volume up and the power button while booting and entering the BIOS setup. You go to more settings, then configuration, and then change the UMA frame buffer size. Lenovo's BIOS provides options of three gigabytes, which is the default, but also four gigabytes and eight gigabytes. Now you might be tempted to immediately ratchet it all the way up to eight gigabytes, but remember, this is coming at the cost of system memory. If you use eight gigabytes of dedicated video memory, you will only have eight Eight gigabytes of regular RAM left. In my limited testing, eight gigabytes of video memory did give me the highest FPS result in Cyberpunk at 66 FPS, a 10% increase from the three gigabyte VRAM amount and up from the 63 FPS I got with the four gigabytes of VRAM. This won't be the case in every game because some games might need more access to RAM, some might need more access to VRAM. So you'll have to swap it in the BIOS every time. Now, I hope that Lenovo gives us a nice middle ground of six gigabytes, so that gives you 10 gigabytes of RAM, and or they just make it easy to swap this in the Legion Space app instead of having to revert to the BIOS every single time. And if you wanna see me do more dedicated testing on this VRAM amount in a bunch of different games on the Legion Go, be sure to leave a comment down below and we'll consider it for a future video. So that's it, you swap the memory amount in the BIOS, you turn on radio on super resolution and enabled the custom 30 watt profile on 144 Hertz. So you should be up and running and ready to go with your Legion Go. We will have a more in-depth review coming out in the next week or so, so get subscribed if you're interested in that. Happy gaming, my friends.